Um, today, I um, uh, um, have something serious to talk about, and um, it's not appropriate for me to to first shoot. I, I, I mean, I, I want to I want to do it without a first shoot on to um, because it's so serious. Now, it shouldn't be depressing because this fits into my stories of what wonderful things have happened because I discovered fairies. And, and this one is helping me to deal with the uh, death of my father back in, near Christmas 1999. It was something I was reminded of uh, when watching an episode of Stargate SG-1, Meridian, where uh, Dr. Ja uh, Daniel Jackson um, um, dies, and <laughs> blows me, you know, the, the, the line they use for ascending, going into ascension. Altered plane of reality, you know, that sort of thing. And, and um, it reminded me a little, uh, about my father's and, and about a concept that is very difficult for anybody. One of the things talked about in that episode was one of the many things I want to find out about uh, Buddhism and related religions. Uh, the um, path to enlightenment, which I normally, which I mistakenly call nirvana, uh, but it's, it's a path to enlightenment. Nirvana or whatever doesn't matter. What you know, just it's it's improvement of oneself and finding other concepts. And there had been one word that had uh, eluded me, and I thought it was a attribute that was. Um, something different, uh, but it's just simply the word resolve, which the dictionary says to find an answer, determine, and decide. So um, I just, I, I don't know, it's just something I feel like I'm lacking, but it's not resolve, but maybe something else, and maybe fortitude or something, you know, I'm, I'm not normally very, for lack of a better word, courageous, you know, uh, I try, I practice, uh, but it's, that's why I have such a difficult time just finding people to ask to do things with, because it's just, I'm just afraid to ask, Yeah, so it's, it's taken a very long time. So, uh, they were talking about that. They were doing a decision much like I did with my father, and much as was uh, nicely illustrated in a, another favorite of mine. Uh, I, I'm, I'm also a big fan of Star Trek, and I believe it's Star Trek V, the under, uh, whatever, that one where they go to a religious planet barrier of the world universe thing and meet God. <laughs> Yeah, God's an alien. Yeah, well, yeah, he's kind of not from Earth. He's kind of from out there somewhere. Um, oh, here God, the religious nuts are going to go bonkers on me, right, Elsa, Misty? Yeah, there's a cat in there. Um, and that episode, um, one of the concepts was um, Spock's brother was leaving everybody of their pain. And Captain Kirk says, I need my pain. And Dr. McCoy had a scene where he's beside uh, Dr. McCoy, being a medical doctor, is on, uh, uh, with his father on his father's deathbed, who's suffering. And it's a literal pull the plug decision. Do we end the person's suffering, or do we artificially keep them alive in hopes that they'll get better? Because there's always that possibility. We're always finding cures, we're always finding ways to make it more possible and to end suffering is not necessarily a good reason to kill somebody. 
that, but there are times uh, appropriateness, and it's family that unfortunately has to make that decision as well as putting together a living will. And my father had did do a living will. And so in that scenario, um, dad at the time was in a uh, board and care home, or whatever they call them, um, and he, at one point his heart stopped or something, and he had died. But we had, I was sure we had given, given them a no resuscitate order per dad's living will. But they went ahead and did it anyway. So here's my father, brain dead, taken to the hospital. And so they, my mother and I went, and we went over it, and I uh, had to make the decision, do we just keep him on artificial life, life support for all eternity in hopes that maybe somehow he wakes up? And, and so far, we went, and as far as I could tell, the doctors were saying that he was brain dead. They didn't, they were, for some reason, not answering my questions directly. So, Mom and I made the decision to pull the plug to end Dad's suffering because his, he, he had a, a pretty bad spinal injury back in 69 and it tortured him his whole life. And so, that's the right thing to do. It's a difficult decision to make. But I made it. But, unfortunately, it took four days for Dad to die, and it was torture for Mom and I. And, uh, so he finally died, but one of the things it did give me a chance to do is say goodbye. I got a chance to say goodbye to Dad. So he finally died, and this is just before Christmas. Which makes that holiday very difficult. But now, it's been uh, tw over 12 years, so... Um, So that's the story about my father. So, um, one of the wonderful things that the furry culture has given me is my father, I forgot a little more background, my father's interned in what I believe is called a niche. Um, and, and back in Santa Rosa where I grew up and I've, it's too far away, I can't afford to go so I've not been able to visit him for many years and I really can't do anything about it, I just don't have the money but the furries have helped I discovered something so um, I was um, some time ago trying to think of, you know, I thought it was a neat idea, why don't we think of fursanas, animal characters, for, to represent our, our friends, family, and so forth. And I was trying to think of my father, one for my father, and, um, what came to mind was workhorse, because he was always working hard, um, and, and then, uh, he loved toy fox terriers, so maybe it would be, you know, be, fun to do him as a toy fox terrier type, you know, color and, and all that sort of stuff, not necessarily size. But, again, you know, this um, idea popped up while I was watching Stargate H2 on, and I was seeing the MGM Lion logo. And I saw my father. So I did I realized that a lion 
what we believe a lion to be who fits my father perfectly. Fit him perfectly. Uh, the, you know, I go on and hear about you know the Kimba the white lion and Caesar the father and Kimba the child and Kimba when I watch that show kind of feels like my child or when I wish I had and, 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 I, and so forth. But I could not see Dad as that white lion uh, as Caesar. He's a regular lion like me. And for those who don't know, this is Excelsior may not see him very well. This is Excelsior, Confederation Fox, my persona, and just the first suit. So, I realized my father was a lion, and if he, I don't particularly I believe in reincarnation in a true sense of reincarnation, but if he were to be reincarnated, he would be reincarnated as a lion because he was. And so now, thanks to furries, I have found a way to be able to talk to my father, to discuss things, how things are going. Because I can't go back to Santa Rosa as much as I wish I could. And one of those things was one of my early plushies that I got. I look at the sky. I see my father. I can talk to him. I could be with him. Imagine him looking over me, watching me. It's a wonderful idea, wonderful concept. So no, I can talk to my father. I have something to hug to. <sighs> this is an idea I will spread to others of you can deal with the death in the family. One of the ways that I believe I was taught about in the death is to find something that is a part of that person. Sure, we should get rid of everything so you can forget, but that's suppressing feelings. No, it's not right. It doesn't sound right to me. Find the one thing. This is that one thing. Okay. Well, let's change this to the lighter side of silliness. I said I was not doing this the first week because it's very serious, so what am I wearing? I'm wearing my first shirt. I mean, this is what made this on. It's just a shirt. It's not a fursuit. suit. It's just a shirt. Just thought I'd do it for fun. <laughs> as, we, as I said in one meeting, and the guy picked up on it, it was, uh, I just can't get enough fur. <laughs> it's all tongue-in-cheek. So... Thank you for listening. This is Excelsior the Lion. Until next time. Right, Dad? <laughs>